check out the worst human parasites that you definitely don't want to get. Number eight, pork tapeworm. The pork tapeworm is one big reason to not undercook pork. The adult pork tapeworm is found in humans and has a flat ribbon-like body which is white in color and measures on average two to three meters in length, but they can become much larger and some worms can grow to over eight meters long. After some unlucky person eats infected pork, the larva found in the meat finds its way into the small intestines of its host and attaches itself on the intestinal wall, where it grows in size with nutrients from its surroundings. The worm itself really isn't a problem, but it's really the eggs it produces that are the issue. Basically, the eggs hatch into what's called oncospheres, and these guys migrate to places such as striated muscles, liver, and the brain where they settle to form cysts. If you get one of these cysts in the brain, this is when major problems start. Everything from eye problems, blindness, seizures, paralysis, or even death. Well, that escalated quickly. I guess this is what happens when things start eating your brain. This parasitic infection is the main cause of acquired epilepsy worldwide. The answer to everything? Thoroughly cook your food. Most parasitic infestations can be completely prevented by eating properly cooked meats, washing vegetables, and drinking clean water. Number seven, pinworm infection. A pinworm infection is a human parasitic disease caused by, surprise, surprise, another worm. The entire life cycle of a pinworm from egg to adult takes place in the human intestinal tract of whoever is lucky enough to get these guys in their body. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You guys know I'm being sarcastic, right? The most common symptom is uh, itching in the anal area. I bet that can make sleeping a lot more fun. The craziest thing about these worms is that they could virtually be anywhere because they've evolved to be very effective at traveling from host to host in egg form. These pinworms are spread only between people as other animals don't spread the disease. The eggs come out first around the anus and can survive for up to three weeks under extreme conditions. I meant that as in the eggs can still survive on say a kitchen counter. You can easily become infected if you touch a contaminated surface and then inadvertently touch your eyes or mouth. Eggs are frequently swallowed following contamination of the hands, food, or basically anything that the eggs can come in contact with. The people most at risk are those who live in dormitories, in healthcare institutions, or worse yet, prisons. Another reason not to go to prison, guys. The surface of the eggs is sticky, which allows them to stick to whatever surface they can grab onto. Pretty much anything and everything you can imagine. When these little eggs get into the dust on the floor or on a bookshelf, they can become airborne and be widely dispersed. Another instance would be when someone shakes out sheets or dust furniture around someone who's infected. This means that you can get infected by breathing infected air, touching infected surfaces, or sleeping in an infected bed, even if the originally infected person was there three weeks ago. It's the most common worm infection in the developed world, and kids in school are the most common sufferers. So if you know or see someone that's constantly scratching their ass, stay away. Stay far away. Number six, eyelash mites. Most people think that mites are usually an infestation that only affects pets, such as cats or dogs. Well, these people are gonna have to think again. These tiny eight-legged creatures chill in our brows and eyelashes, feasting on skin cells and oils that we produce. These eyelash mites, whose scientific name is Demodex, spend most of their time buried in hair follicles and are most active while people sleep because they hate light. Around 65 species of Demodex are known, but only two species live on humans. They thrive on the natural oils produced by the body, but both species are primarily found on the face, specifically near the nose, eyelashes, and eyebrows, but they also can thrive elsewhere on the body. The good news is that these mites usually don't cause any symptoms, although occasionally some skin diseases can be caused by the mites. If you catch them under a microscope, you'll see them swimming around skin cells in their colonies. 
mite infestation is incredibly common. In fact, a recent study showed that mites were present in 100% of the people they tested over the age of 18. Don't think about it now. But this means you and I pretty much have these guys all over our eyes. Eyelash mites are transmitted through direct facial contact. Basically, whenever you get close to someone that's infected, you're getting these mites. But then again, apparently the question is more who doesn't already have these guys on their bodies. A typical eyelash mite has a two to three week cycle and will eventually die, but all their kids are just going to continue the process. What's the only way out of it? Steam your bed constantly and wash everything in hot water as often as possible. Number five, lymphatic filariasis. Ever seen pictures of people with inflamed limbs? A lot of the time it's caused by parasitic filarial worms. Having lymphatic filariasis can cause elephantitis, which happens when these parasitic worms lodge in the lymphatic system and cause blockages to the flow of fluids. These worms cause swelling mainly in the lower half of the body. So how does someone get infected? These worms are spread by the bite of an infected mosquito. In fact, lymphatic filariasis was the first mosquito-borne disease to be discovered. The disease is transmitted by different types of mosquitoes, and although it mainly affects the lower limbs, different filarial worms tend to affect different parts of the body. Adult worms live in the lymphatic system and disrupt its function. The infestation can be controlled and even cured if it's detected in the early stages, but after years of affecting the lymphatic systems and becoming a chronic inflammation, the only solution after that is surgical. About 40 million people worldwide were disfigured or incapacitated by the disease in 2015, and elephantiasis by lymphatic filariasis is one of the most common causes of disability in the world. Number 4. Trichinella spirally Trichinella spirally is a roundworm that's commonly found in all sorts of animals, but the most common way for people to get it is to eat undercooked infected pork. This is one of the most widespread parasites in the world, and catching these worms is incredibly easy. The first symptoms appear between 12 hours and 2 days after eating infected meat. These worms live in the small intestine of its host. The migration of adult worms in the intestinal walls can cause traumatic damage, and the waste products these worms excrete can provoke a severe reach reaction such as nausea, vomiting, sweating, and diarrhea. Five to seven days after the appearance of these symptoms, severe swelling in the face and fever may occur. Ten days following ingestion, intense muscular pain, difficulty breathing, weakening of the pulse and blood pressure, heart damage, and various nervous disorders may occur, eventually leading to death because of heart failure, respiratory complications, or kidney malfunction. This is all because of larval migration. Kind of a big deal for accidentally eating some undercooked meat, don't you think? The answer to all this? Again, just properly cook any meat that you eat. When properly cooked, trichinella worms die. Number 3. Cutaneous Larva Migrans The next time you're going off on a nice tropical vacation, be on the lookout for Cutaneous Larva Migrans, or CLM as it's quite commonly called. If you experience intense itching and skin eruption after visiting a sandy beach, you might have come in contact with larvae of one of the various parasites of the hookworm family. This is one of the most common types of cutaneous conditions in the world. This parasite lives in the intestines of dogs, cats, and other wild animals, and its larvae can live in the sand and dirt for a long time after animals have pooped in the ground. This is actually the reason why most beaches limit the entry of dogs and other animals. After being laid in the ground, hookworm eggs develop over a period of one to two weeks into the infectious larval form that can burrow through any intact skin that comes into contact with sand or soil that's been contaminated with infected feces. Because they're able to infect deeper tissues of other animals, such as the lungs and the intestines, humans aren't these parasites' ideal hosts. The larvae are only able to penetrate the epidermis of the skin. The worms can move an inch or more every day, creating what's known as a creeping eruption. This can cause intense itching, but at least it heals by itself over the next months. 
However, the symptoms and the intense itching usually causes the people infected to seek medical treatment before this is time to happen. I guess the best way to prevent this is to just stay away from any visible logs at the beach and then you're on your own after that. Number two, Loa Loa Worm. There are a lot of different parasites that come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. The scariest of them all might be the Loa Loa Worm. Like a lot of parasites, it's small and it's worm-like. Well, actually, it is another worm. The scariest thing about it is where it could live on humans. When a person is infected, the Loa Loa Worm can live and thrive in the eye. How exactly does someone get it? If an infected mango fly or a deer fly bites someone, the Loa Loa parasite gets into someone's skin, where it'll penetrate skin tissue and migrate, and a lot of times it'll get to someone's eyes. Loa Loa doesn't normally affect a person's vision, but it can be painful when it's moving around the eyeball or across the bridge of the nose. Typically, these worms are found in rainforest-like environments in West and Central Africa. In the human host, the worm grows slowly and the person rarely has any symptoms. Loa loa larvae migrate to the subcutaneous tissue where they mature to adult worms in approximately one year, but it can sometimes take up to four years. Adult worms migrate in the subcutaneous tissues at a speed of less than one centimeter per minute. Adult worms can live up to 17 years in the human host. The worm will temporarily live anywhere on the body beneath the skin. The usual symptoms are painless, but itching and swelling can occur in any infected body part. In cooler temperatures is when the worm has a frequency to migrate to the surface of the eye, causing itching, pain, and tenderness. I think the worst part has to be feeling something moving inside your eye. Ugh. This small parasite has been known to have affected Egyptian pharaohs more than 4,000 years ago. Hmm, I guess they found some of these mummified worms out there? Number one, Leishmaniasis. If you've ever traveled to the jungle, you might have heard about Leishmaniasis. This parasitic infestation is transmitted by the bite of an infected sandfly and affects the nose, mouth, and that general region. This parasite usually targets the most superficial layers of the skin. And the Brazilian version travels through the skin until it reaches the nose, mouth, pharynx region of whoever it's found. This infection might even lead to the complete destruction of the nose and other mucosa. Not exactly a nice little souvenir. Leishmaniasis infestations develop in the form of painful ulcers in the skin and it can become infected if the patient scratches their skin and then doesn't take care of the wound. When it reaches the nose, the patient might feel nasal symptoms, such as stuffiness or bleeding. It can go unnoticed for up to 20 years. And if left untreated, these ulcers can evolve and cause serious oral and nasal lesions. This damages the mucous membranes and ultimately destroys much of the affected areas, such as perforation of the nasal septum. Ugh. As it turns out, there are no vaccines or drugs to prevent infection, and the only way is to avoid getting bitten by an infected fly. Yeah, that's going to be a bit tricky. Here's what's next. Redback spiders. On top of being really invasive, they're also super poisonous, which really isn't a great combination. Their painful bite has earned them a fearsome reputation in Australia, where natives consider them to be among the most dangerous of spiders. During the 1980s, 